As you may know, there are a lot of great ways to make music on the banjo. People have been playing banjos all over the world for centuries, and over that time, they have developed all sorts of creative and really awesome sounding ways of playing the banjo. And that alone is a great thing. However, for someone new to the banjo, it can be a little bit overwhelming. There's all sorts of terminology that's used. It's not always clear what people mean by different terms. And many times people use the same terms to refer to different things. I know when I first started playing the banjo, all I really knew was that I liked the sound of the banjo. I had no idea uh, that there were so much, such a rich variety of ways to play it in different sounds. So in this video, I'm going to be breaking down all the different styles of banjo playing so that you'll have a clear understanding of all of the wonderful ways that you can make music on the banjo. You will also find links in this video's description to examples of all the different banjo styles, as well as links to a free course for getting started with downpicking banjo or getting started with uppicking banjo. Also, at the end of this video, I will summarize all of these styles in one simple flowchart. So if you have a banjo, and you're not really sure what all these different technical styles are, or you're confused about the terminology, and you're trying to figure out what kind of music you really want to make on your banjo, then you're going to want to watch this video. Now, if you're wondering what technique, whether it's up picking or down picking, or what style of banjo you should learn first, I'll be covering that in the next video. But I think first, it'll be really helpful for you to understand the basic differences between the techniques and styles of banjo playing. Okay, so first I'm going to make an important distinction, and that is between banjo technique and styles of banjo, because they're oftentimes used interchangeably, but they refer to two different things. So technique refers to the mechanics of playing the banjo. In other words, the kinds of movements that you make with your hands and arms to make music on the banjo. On the other hand, a style of playing refers really to the consistent use of certain techniques or combinations of techniques in order to produce a particular sound or aesthetic. So this means that if you learn the fundamental techniques of up picking or fingerstyle banjo, then you should be able to use those techniques to play in any style of up picking, whether it's three finger, uh, three finger bluegrass, three finger old time, two finger thumb lead, and so on. Likewise, if you learn the fundamental techniques of down picking or claw hammer banjo, then you should be able to play in any claw hammer style, whether it's melodic style or round peak style or even minstrel style. And again, we'll get to what those are in a minute. So in this video, I'm going to be covering the differences in the techniques and then the differences in the styles. All right, so let's begin with the first technical division of banjo playing. And really, this is the primary decision that any new banjo player is going to be making when, they de when they're deciding what kind of music they want to start playing on the banjo. And that distinction is whether or not you're going to pick the strings up or down with your picking hand or your picking fingers. Whether you're going to strike the strings down with the back of your nail, like that, or whether you're going to pick the strings up like this. So whether you're going to be a down picker or an up picker, at least to start with. Like I said, if you separate learning the techniques from learning the styles in the learning process, then if you learned up pick, you should be able to play in any different up picking style. Or if you learned a down pick, you should be able to play in any down picking style. Now, to talk about the differences in those up picking and down picking styles, we need to talk a little bit about how banjo music is constructed. So I think the most helpful way to think about banjo music in general is that you have the melody notes or the notes of the song and then you have what we call decoration notes and those decoration notes can be in the form of harmony notes so notes that sound good against the melody that's being played as well as drone notes and a drone is just a single note that's recurring in the background throughout a piece of music so this fifth string on the banjo which is tuned to a particular pitch and typically stays in that pitch throughout a song is your drone note that you hear uh, in banjo music so that's one of its distinctive features so you have a lot that's going on on the banjo uh, in addition to the primary melody note and really 
how those decorations around the notes sound um, and what's done to support the melody is really what differs in these various styles. So we're going to first tackle up picking and break it down into its component styles. Um, other terms besides up picking that you might hear are finger picking or finger style, but all it means is just you're plucking upwards with the fingers. And it can either be with bare fingers or with uh, finger picks, typically metal finger picks on the fingers and a, and a plastic thumb pick on the thumb. All right, so the next technical division for up picking is whether or not you're going to use two fingers or three fingers. And then three finger technique can be used to play in several different styles. The next division style wise would be in what's typically described as old time styles or bluegrass styles. Now it's worth noting that these both spring from the same well and to the casual observer they will have no idea what the difference between old time and bluegrass banjo is. Only a banjo player really is going to be able to pick out the differences. But old time three finger pretty much means um, three finger style that's used to play old time music. And old time music is kind of the repertoire of music that people played in their homes um, prior to the advent of radio. So before music became commercialized, stuff people played a lot in the Appalachian South um, for their own entertainment and for dances. And then bluegrass style is essentially that same music that was then adapted and made a little bit more commercial initially and famously by Bill Monroe. So they transformed this music that people played for, them, for their own entertainment and for dances into a more commercially viable uh, concert kind of form. And the sound of the banjo, in particular the sound of Earl Scruggs' style of banjo playing, became a defining feature of bluegrass music in general and of bluegrass banjo. So those are our first two stylistic divisions, old time three finger and bluegrass three finger. And then within three finger bluegrass, more divisions have emerged. So I mentioned the original uh, bluegrass style is considered Scrug style. Again, it was his way of playing the banjo that became synonymous with bluegrass music and bluegrass banjo. So for many, he is still the defining sound of bluegrass banjo. But really, this is more an artifact of history than anything else. Until Earl Scruggs joined up with Bill Monroe to play what they were defining as bluegrass music, Earl Scruggs was just another old-time three-finger banjo player. And every experienced three-finger banjo player has his or her own unique sound. Um, but what happened was that Earl's particular sound became a style all its own. So really, the question of what distinguishes three-finger bluegrass banjo from three-finger old-time banjo is really a question of what were the unique aspects of how Earl Scruggs played the banjo, or, or what were the signature elements of per, his particular um, way of playing the banjo. But again, really, three-finger Scruggs is, really, is just three-finger um, old-time technique that's adapted to play in a bluegrass context. One of those adaptations is the use of finger picks um, to add uh, volume to, play, to stand out in a band context, and to add a sharpness of tone to help the banjo cut through the mix of instruments in a band situation. Bluegrass banjo is really a style of banjo that's intended for group or band playing. Now, like most any advanced banjo player, Earl had his own set of licks and phrases that he liked to use, so he would sprinkle those in uh, in certain times. Just like most every person has his or her own favorite catchphrases that they use in regular spoken uh, language. But because his playing became the defining sound of bluegrass banjo, his particular phrases became the signature elements of Scruggs style banjo and bluegrass banjo. Another signature element of Earl Scruggs style was the heavy use of syncopation specifically the use of what ultimately became known as a forward roll, which is essentially a pattern of playing the thumb, um, index, and middle fingers in succession. And one of the unique things about this pattern is it actually doesn't resolve or come back to the beginning for a full three measures. And so if you end up inserting the melody notes into that pattern, it naturally creates its own syncopation. And this was the thing that really blew people's mind uh, the most about Earl Scruggs' playing when he first came on the scene. They couldn't quite make sense of how he was getting that sound because he was doing this kind of odd pattern of three, uh, three notes over an even uh, time signature. And so people were used to hearing things or sounds that resolved or patterns that resolved within the span of a single measure. And this didn't fit in that structure. 
And yet, somehow it still worked, and it was uh, very perplexing for a lot of folks um, until it was kind of deconstructed by another banjo player by the name of Bill Keith. And probably many people who think of the banjo still probably think of that scrug sound, this kind of rolling nonstop barrage of notes that seems chaotic but yet organized at the same time. And uh, I think that's what makes it so captivating. So just as a short demonstration here, I'm going to play the familiar song, Row, Row, Row Your Boat. First uh, played three finger without any forward rolls and then played three finger with forward rolls as Earl Scruggs might do. So here's the first version. Now I'll play in a more distinctive Scrugg style where I'm adding in those forward rolls. But here with bluegrass banjo and scrug style banjo in particular, you have a very unique musical situation where an entire style is really about copying or emulating the idiosyncrasies of one single person. And I'm not sure there is an analogous situation anywhere in the world of music. But to summarize here, there's really no fundamental difference between old time three finger and bluegrass style banjo. If Earl Hatton joined up with Bill Monroe to form the Bluegrass Boys, he would just be another in a long line of great old-time three-finger style players with their own unique style. All right, so that's the first type of bluegrass style, which is Scruggs style, which many people equate with bluegrass banjo since Scruggs was the pioneer. Um, another bluegrass uh, style is what is referred to as melodic style or sometimes Keith style after Bill Keith, who was one of the popularizers of it. And this style really makes the most sense in the context of playing fiddle tunes on the banjo. So fiddle tunes are, are tunes that are composed on the fiddle, a very important and prominent part of the uh, tradition of banjo music. Um, the banjo and fiddle were a common configuration as a band to play for dances, so there's a whole repertoire of uh, fiddle tunes that are associated with uh, traditional banjo musics. Now, as I alluded to earlier, Earl Scruggs' style of playing was really this kind of driving uh, rhythmic way of playing, heavily uh, syncopated and uh, relied on particular patterns. Now, one of the features of fiddle tunes uh, is that they are noty, meaning that there are a lot of notes played. And uh, as I mentioned early, earlier, Earl Scruggs had this really driving uh, banjo sound that relied upon kind of the repeated use of these rhythmic patterns. And uh, if, uh, if getting one of those extra melody notes required deviating from that pattern, he typically didn't do so. So he would oftentimes sacrifice some of those melody notes or not play them. In the melodic style of playing the banjo, on the other hand, uh, the banjo player is typically getting most, if not all, of the melody notes on the banjo. And furthermore, consecutive melody notes are played on different strings rather than the same string. And that is done in order to help kind of preserve the rolling sound of the banjo. And I'll show you an example here in just a minute. And, and that style, again, is typically referred to as melodic or as Keith style, named after uh, Bill Keith, who was one of the pioneers of it. Now, the other approach to getting consecutive melody notes is to get them on the same string. And there are banjo players who utilize that style, and that naturally is referred to as single string, uh, or sometimes referred to as a Reno style, named for Don Reno, who first popularized it. And that is very similar to how you play a guitar. Most guitarists are familiar with playing multiple notes on the same string. Not surprisingly then, um, single string style on the banjo sounds more like a guitar than the more traditional rolling sound that many of us uh, associate with the banjo. So as an example, um, we'll take the first few notes of the fiddle tune, Sailor's Hornpipe, uh, which goes ba 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 you know, the Popeye song. So if we were to play that in guitar style, we might get the first few notes on the first string, and then the open third, and then the second string, and then back to the first string the last four notes. So again, we're getting multiple notes on each string that would be referred to, it would be considered a single string style. 
Now, on the other hand, we can get all of those notes on different strings, and that would be like this. So you can hear, you kind of still get that rolling sound when you do that. It requires uh, more work to kind of work it all out on the banjo and learn all these different uh, positions. But again, it's a way of playing fiddle tunes on the banjo uh, while preserving some of the features of the banjo sound that we all uh, love so much. All right, just to recap the different styles of three-finger banjo. Remember, the techniques that you're using to get these different st stylistic sounds are, are identical. So we have old-time three-finger, which really just means playing old-time music with three fingers. We have bluegrass banjo or Scruggs banjo, which is playing bluegrass music on the banjo with a lot of imitation of how Earl Scruggs liked to play the banjo. And again, there's lots of overlap here and these aren't clean distinctions with clean lines between them. And then we can further divide bluegrass into Scruggs, as I mentioned before, so which is characterized by using the specific licks or phrases that Earl Scruggs liked the heavy use of syncopation, and the use of the forward roll, forward roll to, to get that syncopation, and this kind of balance of rhythm and melody, and a hard driving, um, a very rhythmic sound. And then you have melodic or Keith style, in which you are trying to play most, if not all, of the melody notes of a fiddle tune with uh, successive or consecutive melody notes being played on different strings. And then lastly, there is single string or Reno, Reno style, where you do play successive melody notes on the same string uh, where possible. But again, all of these different stylistic distinctions are not mutually exclusive. Uh, you don't have to play one only, um, you can play them all, you can mix and match. They really exist as a way of tracing the history and evolution of how the banjo has been played and to give us a language in which to talk about the different sounds that we can make on the banjo. Okay, now the other technical division for up-picking or fingerstyle banjo is two-finger banjo. So you might wonder why would you use two fingers if you can use three? And uh, you may have heard the adage that the best art is born of constraints, and I think that definitely applies here. So sometimes, many times in fact, um, limitations uh, can stimulate some very creative solutions, and um, that's definitely the case when it comes to two-finger banjo. And in my opinion, every banjo player who's learning to up-pick the banjo should first learn two-finger before uh, learning three-finger. And that's because, number one, it's simpler, and it allows you to start playing some really great music uh, a lot faster. Um, number two, it builds the perfect foundation for three-finger banjo and really helps you understand how um, three-finger three, three banjo, particularly three-finger bluegrass banjo, is constructed. Um, so many people you learn that style first and then wonder why it doesn't sound right. And um, it's because they're missing that kind of essential foundation of how it all is constructed and how it all fits together. So the point being that um, learning two finger first will greatly improve your odds of learning three finger style well. So ultimately learning two finger style banjo first not only gives you a great banjo style that you can continue playing the rest of your life if that's what you want to do, which is great, um, but it also will make it much easier for you to learn three finger style well uh, if you choose to do so. So in two finger style, Typically, the strings are played with the thumb and the index finger. And the two different primary styles are two-finger thumb lead and two-finger index lead. Now again, these are stylistic di distinctions because the techniques for playing these are exactly the same. The difference here, again, is, is, is how those te techniques are deployed to get a per particular sound. And the word lead here is referring to which finger is playing the melody notes of the song. So in the case of thumb lead, the thumb is leading, meaning the thumb is playing the melody. And then you have the index finger playing drone notes, along with the thumb playing drones on the fifth string. On the other hand, index lead, as you might imagine, means that you're playing the melody notes with the index finger. All right, so now I will play our song, Row, Row, Row Your Boat, in a two-finger thumb lead. Okay, so that is up picking. Now let's talk about down picking. And again, uh, this is referring to a picking motion in which the hand is instead of we're instead of plucking the fingers up like this, 
you are playing the strings with the back of the nail of uh, either either your index or middle finger, uh, either one is acceptable, and striking the string with the back of the nail so that you're uh, moving down towards the floor uh, in that motion. So here in uh, down picking styles, the melody notes are by and large being played um, with the picking finger here, whereas the thumb is still picking the fifth, fifth string, essentially the same way it is in up picking banjo. The thumb may also come inside to play the inside strings, which is typically referred to as drop thumbing, dropping it from the fifth string to an inside string. How much that is done is, to, is a stylistic choice and uh, characterizes some of the differences in the style, in the different Callhammer styles. Um, but at this point, from a technical perspective, that's really all there is to it. The remainder of the differences that people talk about with down picking are again stylistic, uh, meaning different preferences for what types of sounds or music that they like to make on the banjo using this particular set of techniques, but the underlying techniques themselves are the same. So now I'm going to get into what those stylistic variations are. I should also ha add here that um, synonymous with down picking is Clawhammer style. Uh, or frailing style. This is not a technical or a stylistic division. These are synonymous terms. Most people these days use them interchangeably. Um, sometimes you will see people saying that claw hammer is one thing and frailing is another thing, but that is not something that is consistently defined. And most of the time these days, people use those terms interchangeably. Now, as you may know, the uh, banjo that we know today um, descended from instru instruments that originated in Africa, and it appears that this down picking style was the traditional way in which those instruments uh, were played. You still see that in the way uh, some of the banjo's predecessors, like the Akonting, uh, are played. And so likely, when the banjo was brought over to the Americas on slave ships, uh, this way of playing was taught by Africans to white settlers. And um, it makes for perfect accompaniment for uh, fiddle tunes and really the combination of this down picking style of banjo um, with, uh, with the fiddle became standard for the standard sound for playing um, dances in the, in the southern U.S. And one of the things people love about down picking banjo or claw hammer banjo is that it has this kind of older sound to it and it really also creates this fantastic blend of melody and rhythm. It's really a complete musical sound um, all in one uh, technique. So within down picking, the most broad style would just be considered old time, where again, like old time three finger banjo, really just refers to old time music being played with the down picking style. Um, another di division is the minstrel style of banjo. So in the mid to late 19th century, the most popular form of music in America were the minstrel shows. Here performers would play on a banjo, uh, a fretless banjo, and that was tuned uh, uh, lower than the tunings that we typically use for modern banjos, but it was also um, traditionally downpicked. And again, there were some stylistic differences, uh, including a tendency to break the pulsing call clawhammer rhythm sometimes to get melody notes as well as a consistent use of the thumb to get some of the melody notes on the inside strings. So the next claw hammer or down picking style you'll hear people refer to is round peak style or round peak banjo. So round peak uh, refers to a particular region in North Carolina where a distinctive style of banjo and fiddle playing emerged. And again, this was a preference for a particular sound that emerged from a group of people over time, as well as the use of particular techniques that were needed to achieve that sound. And some of the more distinctive features of round pick are a sparser use of uh, the strum or a brush stroke, brushing across multiple strings, and relatively more single string playing. Also a heavy use of what is commonly referred to as a bump a ditty rhythm or pattern, bump a ditty, bump a ditty, bump a ditty which makes for kind of a notier, uh, more staccato machine gun type of feel um, to the music and to the sound. And then the last major stylistic division you'll hear people refer to is melodic claw hammer. And this is analogous to melodic three finger style. In both of these, the player is trying to play as many notes or as many melody notes, in particular in as many melody notes of a fiddle tune, which tend to have a lot of notes per measure, as possible. 
whereas someone who is not playing a melodic style might sacrifice some of those melody notes in order to preserve a more driving uh, sound. And then if none of those terms apply, then generally you would just refer to whatever you're playing as claw hammer banjo or frailing banjo. And if you exclusively play old time music, you might say you play um, old time claw hammer banjo. And again, one important thing to remember with all of these stylistic divisions is that these are all overlapping, meaning there will be stylistic elements that are common across all of these styles. All right, so now I'm gonna play Row, Row, Row Your Boat in kind of a general uh, claw hammer style. <laughs> Now I'll play our song Row 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 Your Boat in more of a round peak style. Alright, so now I'm going to show you how you can distinguish between all the different common techniques and styles of five string banjo playing. So, the first question to ask always is, which direction are you plucking? If you are picking upwards, then you are using up picking technique or finger style technique. If you are picking downwards, then you are using down picking technique or claw hammer or frailing technique. Now let's further subdivide the world of up picking. Our next question is, how many fingers are you plucking with? Again, another technical distinction. If you are picking with two fingers, typically the thumb and index, you are playing two finger banjo. If you are picking with three fingers, then you are playing three finger banjo. Next question within three finger is a stylistic division. So, and this one is, are you playing old time music? So are you using three fingers to play the repertoire of old time music on your banjo? If the answer is yes, then you are playing old time three finger banjo. If the answer is no, next question is, are you emulating the style of Earl Scruggs? If yes, then you are playing Scruggs style banjo or bluegrass style banjo in the classic form. If your answer is no, then the next question is, do you try to play each melody note on a different string? If your answer is yes, you do try to play each melody note on a different string or consecutive melody notes on different strings, then you are playing in the Keith or melodic style. On the other hand, if you don't, uh, try to play successive melody notes on different strings, uh, but play them on the same string wherever possible, then you are playing single string or Reno style banjo. So those are the stylistic divisions of three finger banjo. Now let's move to two finger banjo. Pretty easy here. The main question is which finger is playing the melody? If it's the thumb, then you're playing two finger thumb lead. And if it's the index, then you are playing two finger index lead. And with that, we have our major technical and stylistic divisions within up picking or finger style banjo. So now let's further classify the world of down picking or claw hammer. Next question is, are you playing minstrel songs? If the answer is yes, then you're playing minstrel banjo, also sometimes known as stroke style banjo. If your answer is no, the next question is, are you trying to sound like round peak banjoist? And if you recall, some of the characteristics of round peak banjo are um, sparse use of brush strokes, fairly frequent use of drop thumbing, and uh, frequent use of a bump a ditty uh, rhythm. So if your answer to that one is yes, then you are playing round peak style. If your answer is no, the next question is, are you trying to play all of the melody notes of the fiddle tune? If your answer is yes, then you're playing melodic claw hammer style. And if your answer is no, then you can just refer to your playing as claw hammer banjo, or down picking banjo, or frailing banjo. And you'll note here that these technical and stylistic divisions are color coded. So things in blue are technical descriptions or technical distinctions, and those in the gold color are stylistic descriptions. And there you have the major technical and stylistic divisions of five string banjo. All right, so that concludes this breakdown of the various styles of five string banjo playing. Remember, you can find links to more examples of the different styles in the video description, along with a free course for getting started with playing 
down picking or claw hammer style, as well as uh, for getting started playing up picking or finger style.